Hey, what's up? It's Wick for Xiaomi Fi, and today we're looking at the all new Xiaomi Pad 5, the global edition. It's been forever since Xiaomi has released a new tablet, so I'm trying it out with their new stylus and uh, see if it's any good. Let's find out. Let's go. In the box, we've got the Mi Pad 5 itself. There's some instructions, a charging brick, and a USB-C cable, and well, that's about it. The Mi Pad is 25 by 16 centimeters in size and only 6.85 millimeters in height. It's got an 11 inch display with a 2560 by 1600 pixels resolution with 120 hertz refresh rate. The brightness is okay, it's not the brightest display, but Xiaomi is not advertising the amount of nits. Nits. So I'm not exactly sure. It's got an 8 megapixel front facing camera for video calls. On the inside it's got a Snapdragon 860 processor, it comes with 128 or 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage and 6 gigs of DDR4 RAM. It's got a 8720 milliamp hour battery that supports 22.5 watts charging. It's got a quad stereo speaker setup that supports Dolby Atmos for a very nice and rich audio experience. On the back it's got a 13 megapixel camera that supports 4K video as well. And then there's the Xiaomi Smart Pen, a stylus designed to work with the Mi Pad 5 once connected over Bluetooth. This one comes with uh, just a stylus and an extra tip and well, that, that's about it. The stylus is only 12 grams, it's uh, 15 centimeters in size and 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity. It's got an internal battery that charges in about 18 minutes on top of the pad itself to which it's nicely attached with a magnet. Once it's charged it will last for about 8 hours which is quite good. It's got two function buttons on the pen itself which can have various functions kind of depending on what app you're using it in. The installation of that was very simple. It will show a pop-up to pair or you can pair it as a nearby Bluetooth device. Once it's installed, it will show you a little introduction that says you can use the first button to open the notes app with a new note to write on or using the second button to take a screenshot. In terms of looks and in terms of how it feels, I am very impressed with the Xiaomi Pad 5. The material feels very nice and premium. The cutting and feel of the edges is really, really well done and it feels like a well-manufactured device. Although the bezels around the display are a little bit too big, but I wasn't too bothered with it as I like to draw on these and I don't mind uh, to be able to rest my hand on that. But for watching videos, I would have loved for it to be a little bit smaller though. So then how is the Xiaomi Pad 5 in use? Well, when trying it out the first time, I was really happily surprised with the display. Sure, it's not an AMOLED display, but it's vibrant and it's sharp. It's actually a very good display. It luckily doesn't have a lot of bloatware on it, so it really just came with a handful of pre-installed apps like Netflix and then all the Google apps and just a handful of system apps and it all works fast. I've set mine to that 120 hertz refresh rate from the settings and it really feels buttery smooth. Photos and videos with it over the last week, so let's have a look at uh, how it holds up. Let's go. I've watched some YouTube videos and the audio is very, very immersive. I've played some games on it and the performance was actually quite a lot better than I had expected. I've played some PUBG and that's a lot more fun on a tablet sized device than on a phone so that was a lot of fun and the audio of that was really really good that's really what made it more immersive it's just really nice to have those four speakers on it it really makes a difference and here's how uh, music sounds like on the Mi Pad 5 So I did a little A-B stereo recording of that as that should give you a more accurate recording of what that sounds like in real life. Although in real life the experience is a little bit better though. Then I had to obviously try that out with the Mi Smart Pen as I really wanted to try how well it works for drawing. So I first tried it out in the notes app so I could take some notes and that seemed to work just fine. It responds to the pressure differences quite well and the strokes came out quite good. Then I've tried drawing some stuff in the Huion sketch app or Heon, but that wasn't really great. The palm projection didn't seem to do very well and the strokes were very wobbly, um, so I was kind of disappointed with it. 
But as it turned out, that uh, had more to do with the app as when I tried out the Infinite Painter app, I got much better results with it. It's not like it's my best work or anything, but I did manage to draw some fresh and nice Xiaomi Fi pieces using the pencil, so it's not all that bad. In general, it did work just fine, and even with notes, I did feel it writes really nice. Then we've got a camera on this thing as well, so let's try it out. It surely isn't the main selling point, but the 13 megapixel rare camera did give me some okay pictures. It's not all too disappointing. video with it is pretty much the same. It's not mind-blowing, but it's not all that bad, and they're quite usable. At night, they're really more grainy, but I mean, this is a tablet. It's not really meant to take pictures with. The front-facing camera isn't all that spectacular either, so here's a photo taken with that one with some good lighting. Those come out quite well. And then a video recording, as that's what it would look like when you're doing a video call. Front facing camera on the Xiaomi Mi Pad 5. This is what it sounds like and uh, well, this is what it looks like. Here, some flowers. It's not great, but it's really not all that bad. The battery has been quite good. I've gotten six to eight hours of continuous use, depending on uh, what apps I was using with the display on full brightness. And I managed to fully charge it from one to 100% in one hour and 17 minutes. And that's where I kind of want to give you my opinions. So what do I think? Well, overall, I've been really enjoying the Xiaomi Pad 5 thus far. It's been performing well as the 120 Hertz display looks great. The display is really sharp. It's vibrant and it feels fast and responsive. The brightness of the display is not the best. I mean, it's okay for most situations, but it's definitely not a thousand nits like we see on the 11T Pro that we've just looked at. I didn't have much problems with that Snapdragon 860. It kept up with everything I've done on it and I personally will use it mostly for some drawing and, and on the go internet browsing and maybe some Facebooking and that worked just perfectly fine. I like how the pen charges on top of the tablet. It sticks on there nicely and it charges super fast. In general, the stylus performed well. Sure, it doesn't have the best pressure sensitivity of all tablets on the market, but it really did get the job done and it worked just fine. There is a little bit of a delay. It's not as fast as you would have, for example, with an Apple Pencil, but you'll get used to that lag. We're talking about milliseconds here. In just a minute or so, you'll build up the reflex or like the muscle memory to compensate for that lag. You learn how to draw with it very fast. So I didn't have any problem with it, even with like writing by name or something. You can see it really did get the job done and it worked just fine. The audio on this thing is really amazing though. I was impressed with the sound quality and it's been really nice to play around with over the last few weeks that I've been using it. MIUI for the Xiaomi Pad also worked fine for me. It does everything I expect from MIUI and it's got the control center and I personally really didn't have anything to complain about that. The camera was fine. I mean, it's not the best camera and it won't be anything like on their flagship phones, but it's there and it wasn't all that bad. Could have been a lot worse. I did miss a few things uh, like a display out capabilities. I would have loved to have seen that 33 watts charging like on the Chinese version of this tablet. But maybe that's got something to do with European regulations. I'm not sure about that though. I would have also kind of loved to see a headphone jack as there's still a lot of people that really love those. I also kind of would have loved to see a fingerprint scanner which is something that Xiaomi does have on the Xiaomi Pad 5 Pro here in China. I would have kind of loved to see that. I also would have loved to see a Pro version come out for Global and I was a little bit surprised that they didn't do that. But maybe they will do that later. Well, maybe. Who knows? The Xiaomi Pad 5 is coming out in Europe right now for 350 euros, which is around 411 US dollars, which I find to be a very good price tag for the performance and the quality of this tablet. So that's about it for the Xiaomi Pad 5, now coming out for the global market. What do you guys think? Is this uh, the tablet that you want to go and pick up or not? Let me know in the comment section below this video what you guys think. And don't forget to leave a little like below this video to show me that you've liked it so that, uh, you know, you can kind of boost my self-esteem. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, well, know that you probably should because I'm doing a lot of videos about Xiaomi and the Xiaomi ecosystem right here on the Xiaomi Fi channel. As always, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see y'all soon. Peace.